and I'm Haley, and you're listening to Chronically Iconic. We did it backwards. We did it again. Again. <laughs> Where we talk about chronic illness <laughs> and literally everything else. There you go. <laughs> Moving on. I think it just needs to stay that way. It's gonna just... have to because like this is the third time we've done that. <laughs> out of the five that we have out. Yes. <laughs> so it's just gonna be that way. Is it even recording? Yeah. Okay, yeah, it is. Okay, just checking. <laughs> I couldn't see it. Um, okay, so today we're talking about traveling while being sick with a chronic illness slash disability. And tomorrow I'm going to Nashville. Thank you, how she is. <laughs> Road tripping. To see um, Harry Styles. <sighs> I'm so, so excited. I'm so pumped. You're gonna have to like FaceTime me. Oh, I will. I will FaceTime you during the concert. Oh my gosh, I'll cry. I'll okay. FaceTime the. <laughs> oh, I almost said our group message name. Can I say it? I guess. I I'll mean, FaceTime the gynecologist. Yeah. And. <laughs> Story um, for another time. Yeah. But, um, yes. Okay, so how many hours is it exactly to. It's. Wherever you're going in Nashville? I think it's. Four to five hours. The last time that I went... I thought it was four. I guess, like, yeah. depending on where you're going. Well, the last time I went, it took me and Caitlin around six hours because we left at, like, I think it was 11, and we didn't get there until, like, six o'clock. But it was because mm-hmm. we hit, like, lunch traffic, traffic, and then we hit five o'clock traffic in Nashville. So... Uh, and then we stopped in Memphis. Oh, so okay. So it was just, like... <laughs> Yeah. Y'all but, just had a roundabout trip. Yeah, we did, and it was awesome. But, yeah, so I think we're going to leave tomorrow at, like, 8.30 or 9. Are you staying the night? We're staying until Sunday. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, we're going to stay the whole weekend. And uh, Airbnb? No. Uh, so our friend Christy, um, I've known her since I was a freshman in college. Um, she lives in Nashville with her husband, Ooh. so we're going to stay with them. Ooh, we love staying with yeah, friends. We love Christy. Oh, I love She's that. Sweet. Yeah. Well, shout out to Christy. <laughs> um, okay, so what are your plans for this car ride? Elaborate on what, you know, like packing what's going to happen to your body during this four hour car yeah. ride. So, normally I like to drive, mm-hmm. but Grace likes to drive. Oh. Um, so I'm gonna let her drive as much as she wants to. Yeah. But, um, so normally I pack, like, um, Advil or mm-hmm. Naproxen. Um, most of the time Naproxen because Advil's like candy. Um. Wait, wait. Do you know what I mean? Pause. Like, when you take Advil, or when you take, like, Advil for so long, and then it just, like, stops working. Oh, yes. Like, your yeah. body builds up, it, like, like, a stop. tolerance. Yeah. Yeah. Or, like, when you take strong pain medicine for so long, it just, like, doesn't mm-hmm. work. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll probably bring, like, naproxen, and um, my mom has heating car seats. <gasps> oh, that's so really wonderful. Which is really nice, so I'll probably have that on. Yes. Um, I'll probably bring a pillow and a blanket. Mm-hmm. Um, all of my medicine, which mm-hmm. I will not list because it's a list. Yes. Um, and then... With, this is sad, but, like, uh, we have to stop, like, whenever I go on family trips, we have mm-hmm. to stop, like, every couple of hours, because my, does your body Same. get stiff, and, so like, stiff. you have to, like, mm-hmm. unpop every joint yep. that is a poppable. I think, like, on a road trip, I can last probably at most, like, two hours yeah. before I... Well, I'm, I'm really good at hydrating when I'm on trips for some reason, which in a way is not ideal because then you have to pee a lot. Yeah. So. I'm good at not peeing for like eight to ten hours, which Wait, is not good for my that's body. That's wild. I know. It's no, not good. No, I'm like two hours at most, but okay, so medication, pillow, blanket. Yeah. And then we'll probably stop um, like halfway there since it's only four hours. Hopefully, Mm -hmm. if we don't hit traffic. Well, we're leaving so early in the morning, I feel like we won't hit any traffic. Well, you'll just want to, like, go as far as possible before. And then we'll probably stop. stop. Um, But I have to get out of the car and, like, pop everything that I have 
mm-hmm. like I just did. Um, <laughs> and then, like, stretch. I don't – this is bad. I need to do better at this. I don't drink a lot. I'm working yeah, on it. <laughs> that – yes. I'm working on it. <laughs> so – I normally, when we stop at gas stations, I, like, try to get something to drink. Mm-hmm. Um, or before we leave, I, like, bring something with me. Um, but I just, like, forget. Like, when I'm not eating, like, a meal, I don't really drink anything. So I need to work on that. <laughs> this is concerning. I know. And now that I'm thinking about it, I have never seen you drink water. Except, I think we were out to eat, like, dinner one time. And you had, like, a glass of water with lemon. But then you also ordered, like, a Coke. (laughs) Yeah, I don't drink water that I was like, well, kind of cancels out the water if you're going to Yeah, I don't drink water. I need to. Yeah. But, like, when we're driving in the car, I do sometimes. Okay, question. Does, like, coffee help in car rides or caffeine? Caffeine, caffeine helps help? me so much because like car rides specifically. Yeah, because it helps me stay awake. I literally cannot sleep in the car. Oh, that's you? depressing. So, if I have my pillow, um, but then also like I can make a pillow out of anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so if I have a pillow and I have earbuds. And I'm trying to think. If I take, like, pain medication. Oh, yeah, I have to take pain um, medicine before we leave. Oh, like, if I've eaten a snack, I cannot sleep if I'm hungry. So, I'm I'm that person that's, like, bringing <laughs> snacks all, everywhere. Um, so, if I have those things, yes, I can sleep. And then I can read in a car ride. Yeah. I can watch TV. A lot of people can't read. I read every. I don't know. I'm constantly reading. Like, in a car ride, I'm like, let me just bring a book, and then I can be done with this book. Mm -hmm. I can finish it. Read the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Audio books. I have to have something to do. If I'm just, like, sitting, Mm -hmm. I'm, like, focusing on when am I going to get out of this car, because Mm -hmm. I can't just, like... I can... In the sense of, like, I can just sit and be with myself. Yes, I can do that. I've been working on that. But, like, in a car ride, I, like, have to be talking to someone or, like, need to be listening to music or... Distraction on a trip during, like, the getting there time is key. Mm-hmm. Um, especially on, like, long flights. I've never been on Um, well... Let me, let me just share a little bit about my <laughs> experience. So I was actually really lucky um, and privileged before I was diagnosed and before I had, like, my first flare episode. Um, side, side note, when you have, like, your first flare, it's, like, what triggers your pain or, like, triggers your illness or... Because fibromyalgia, what I have, and sleep apnea both, can lay dormant in the body. And MS. Um, oh, MS, is that what you do? Yep, that's okay. how, what happened to me, too. So, like, it can lay dormant in the body until, like, a traumatic event, a car accident, like, a life event. For me, it was a dance injury, what tr- and that's what triggered it. Um, that being said, back to my story. Um, before my illnesses like came alive (laughs) um my dad's a mission pastor so I actually got to go to Africa twice I've been to Canada New York Florida California the Carolinas Montana I know I've really been able to like I got to travel a lot growing up (laughs) which I mean like I could I could never now yeah um which is really sad. I love travel. I love seeing new places because I don't like where I live. <laughs> yeah, same. So um, that's something that, like, if I think about, I get really depressed over. But um, all that to say, that was, like, a five-hour flight, an eight-hour flight, two two-hour flights, an hour flight, I think. Um, that was hell. <laughs> Let's just, like, start there. Um, 
I mean, the trips themselves were, like, amazing, but looking back, I can see, like, my fibromyalgia coming. Like, there were small pains that I was having, and I thought it was normal, but, like, after a while of pacing up and down, like, the plane aisle, and, like, the old people are still able to sit yeah. for this long, like, <laughs> something is up, and that's not normal. Mm -hmm. So, um, for plane rides, I would not recommend plane rides to anyone with a chronic illness. Now, if you have a disability that isn't, like, chronic pain or chronic fatigue, then I think it's, I mean, it's doable regardless, mm -hmm. but I think it would be easier mm -hmm. in a sense because sitting, I mean, like, the my everyday pain is, like, a 7 or an 8. Yeah. Flying, oh, my gosh. I mean, 10 the whole time. Dang. And you just, like, can't do anything about it. See, I've only been on one flight. We went to Florida, but I was in second grade. And yeah. And I hadn't, I mean, the, yeah. I wasn't sick then. So, I am, well, I'm not going to say that yet. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I've been. Like, I wasn't, like, times. diagnosed during those trips. I was, I can just, like, see, like, hints of it coming. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I feel like I have to kind of explain that because I know that it sounds really weird. Like, I know exactly what you mean. Like, when I tell people that, they're like, but you're sick, so you weren't sick, and they're, like, really confused by that, but... Well, there are times that, like, I think back to when I wasn't diagnosed, but I can see, like, mm -hmm. symptoms that I had, yes. and, like, times where I was like, that's not normal, but... You didn't know. I didn't because know. Because that's all you on. know. Yeah. yeah. Jinx. Oh, jinx. <laughs> jinx um, again. Have you... What do you normally do for, like, day appointments, like... Um, I know oh, we both go to, yeah, like when we both go to UAMS, um, mm -hmm. which what do is you normally pack? Three hours away. Um, One more. I've actually gotten really good at the appointment traveling. Mm -hmm. um, I like to say I've gotten it down to a science, <laughs> yeah. if, I, if I may be so bold. Um, so I. The only stuff I bring is snacks, water, um, and distractions. So, like, work, books, phone. Um, but this last couple of times that I went to doctor appointments, I actually drove. And um, I almost think it was better. Like, I didn't drive into the city. I just drove, like, the highway that's, you know. Yeah. Um just put it on cruise mm -hmm. yes <laughs> and then like you just sit there which that was fine mm -hmm. but like if I have to like well this sounds bad you have to pay attention to other drivers <laughs> which you should you do. anyway <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean like yeah. traffic lights and are these people turning it's just putting it on cruise and just sitting there is just easier yeah. for me so well, from here to Little Rock it's like a, sh a one straight way. shot. Yeah. yeah. So for that trip, I really don't need much. And then um, going to Memphis, which is like an hour, hour and a it's half. It's another straight shot. I actually have a harder time with that trip really? than I do with the three hour trip. And I don't know why. Well, it's a lot of curves. Like. I know it, I I okay. get it like you know I can't you can't see my hand but you can <laughs> it's like going around like that big loop that hurts my body and then there's yeah. a lot of like that like right. going around curves and that road is like seventy five so I get it so maybe it's the curves and the mm -hmm. hills yeah um but Little Rock is just one highway that makes sense. Yeah. Whenever I go to doctor's appointment, even just, like, traveling for, like, vacation or, mm -hmm. like, or vacation maybe tomorrow, is different. vacation I is have, different. like, tools, like, <laughs> massaging tools that yeah. I bring. Also, side note, if you are flying, I mean, if you need to pack an extra suitcase to take your pillow, your blanket, 
like all of those things is so much more important than the cost of paying for an extra bag. And I will say that because the recovery, the little bit of recovery that you get like on a vacation, the sleep, the um, like couple hours of downtime maybe in mm -hmm. between like activities, you have to take advantage of that mm -hmm. because it's all about like recovering as quick as you can so that you can continue to quote unquote enjoy the trip. Yeah. Um, so want to stress that because I, um, I regretted or I regretted, I regret not like bringing everything that my body needed on especially these longer trips yeah because you know when I go on like trips at all like even a, like a day trip or the weekend trips or a vacation like I have a bag of like things to distract me while we're driving so like books headphones mm -hmm. my iPad like school stuff and then I have like another bag of like medicine and yeah. like pillows and like everything that'll make me feel good for that mm -hmm. whole week do you have um like tools that like help your body feel better like I have I need to take a picture of my collection yeah like, you do it will cover like the floor and like all these different tools and, and gadgets per se but like they're for massaging like heating packs um, a lot of like heating pads and like icing pads and then like I have this mask that I wear for my migraines, yes. and that thing is the best thing in the world. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I bring all that stuff with me, but mm -hmm. I need to Does it invest in cause that. you to, like, pack an extra bag oh, yeah. with all this stuff? Because uh -huh. I think for some reason, like, I have it in my mind, like, you have to bring as little as possible. Mm -hmm. And I don't really know why I have that in my brain, but... um. I, that is not true at all. Um, so also, when you are traveling, I don't know, I mean, you mostly just drive to all the places you go to or been. Um, my mom drives me to my appointments, like Little Rock. Um, I went to my first doctor's appointment by myself this week you did oh my god yeah it was so in it was you. in jonesboro so I, <laughs> I, 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 that's sorry, okay that's a me. big deal though and like i felt like a, a woman yeah because <laughs> like, there's so much like trauma yeah. that is like triggered yeah. with going to doctor appointments like i've literally gone through so much and i don't think i didn't i never thought that i would be able to go by myself mm -hmm. i really love this doctor and i was like she makes me feel safe yeah like I that know, is like the key to getting uh -huh. good health care yeah. and like getting what you need is feeling like safe even mm -hmm. just in the building yeah. like there are so many things that yeah um affect that mm -hmm. and she's like She's a young woman, like, she's mm -hmm. probably 10 years older than I am. Like, I feel like she's in her early 30s, yeah. mid, mid to late 30s, She's maybe. not an old white man. No, she's not. <laughs> and so, like, when I go in, uh, we talk about, like, our lives, and, mm -hmm. like, that's the first thing we talk about, and then we'll talk about, like, what's going on. And what was really funny is she asked me what I was doing this weekend, and I told her I was going to see Harry Styles, and she was like, "Will you bring me some pictures the next time Aww, you come?" And so like I'm gonna print off some pictures, but like I, I love making felt, connections like yes. that with my doctors because it makes me feel like I can trust them. Yeah, and it makes me feel like they're human. Like yes, I don't feel like they're robots, and they well, just it shows want to that them. they recognize that you're a person mm -hmm. and not just a problem to solve, yeah. and they want to help. Mm -hmm. Like they, like want they want to see you, you succeed. In yeah, life. exactly. Which I mean, that can be a whole nother. Is just doctors, yeah. but um. So when I travel, a lot of times, or at least before, you know, my health issues got serious, um, we would like fly to a city and then like walk or, um, subway, public transportation, mm -hmm. um. I just need to say this because it was so dangerous for me and looking back I cannot believe I didn't speak up for myself 
when we went, specifically when we went to New York, um, cause you know, we're not riding in taxis. Oh my gosh, the expense, but the expense is worth not being sick. Um, and if you can prevent your body from being in extreme pain and I mean, it can ruin the whole experience. Um, the sub, um, like, are you talking about the sub? Just like walking around the oh, city, okay. and I mean public transportation. Yes, because we didn't know how it worked. We're from the rural America. Yeah. <laughs> like, how is that working? And so, I just the the cost of comfort is worth it mm-hmm. when you have a chronic illness and disability. It, honestly, yeah. I mean, I can't stress that enough. I wish I would have spoken up for myself. I wish I would have recognized and not, and like, wasn't embarrassed by it. Well, are you ever embarrassed by like the extreme lengths you have to go to, to like, you know what I mean? I used to be. And then, especially now, like in my program, I've learned that you have to advocate for yourself. And yeah. If you don't advocate for yourself and you don't have people that will advocate for you, nobody's going to advocate for you. Shout out to my mom. Shout out to my family. Because, like, if if you don't have specific people that you know will advocate for you and you will not speak up for yourself, Mm -hmm. nothing's going to get done. And so, like, when I go to places, it's really funny now because, like, I've taught, I'm not taught my parents is because like they're educated but like yeah they've we, had to we've learn. learned yeah like over the years like how many parking spaces like a hand like how many handicapped spars handicapped parking spaces <laughs> dang need to be in a parking lot with how you know what I mean like if there's like a hundred there needs to be this many handicapped parking spaces mm-hmm. and so we'll go and my dad's like there's not enough And he's Mm -hmm. like, there needs to be more. It's not until, like, you have to, like, really, like, enter the world. Exactly. With your illness or disability that you realize how, no, non-accessible. Is that the phrase? It's non-accessible. Non-accessible. Whatever. (laughs) (laughs) And you realize, like, how non-accessible, like, just living is like in america does that make sense i don't feel like that sentence it makes sense made sense okay it does like you just until you like have to go out in the world by yourself or like a new place um you don't realize how comfortable or how like I don't know. There's a big difference when you like know the city that you're in mm-hmm. versus when you don't know because you don't know when the ba- where the bathrooms are. You don't know where food is. You don't know how long it'll take you to get from point A to point B. You don't know how long you'll be at point B. Mm-hmm. And you know what I mean? There are so many things that you don't know. And there's and like I didn't realize how much planning goes into my everyday life because it's automatic until so you have to like live your everyday life in a different city. You know what I mean? Or even just go to a new store or you're using a a mobility device that or mobility that is true that you haven't used in a long time and they rearrange the store or they rearrange walmart like the other or not the other day it was like in march i was in the this really bad flare and my mom and i um were in little rock and i was in a wheelchair Mm -hmm. and um i had to do this essay for one of my classes i think it was um Serving students with diverse needs is what the class Mm -hmm. was called. It was just talking about, like, how you can um, make the world more accessible Mm -hmm. for people with disabilities. And I had to write this essay about how um, if I had to find a store that wasn't ADA accessible. Mm -hmm. Um, And um, so we were in Little Rock. I was in my wheelchair. Well, we parked in the handicapped parking spot. And, um, there wasn't a ramp to get onto the mm-hmm. sidewalk. So that was the first thing. She had to, like, pop a wheelie to get me up onto the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. Then we went through the doors, 
I couldn't even get through the aisles because there was so much stuff. And then there was boxes like in between the aisles and I don't have a big wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Like it's just a normal size. Mm -hmm. And so it was just like ridiculous. And so like I'm not in my wheelchair like more than, I mean, I used to be in it every day, but like Mm -hmm. thinking about people that live in theirs constantly you know Mm -hmm. like it's so frustrating thinking about how people have to think about traveling like could you imagine I actually don't know like if someone uses a wheelchair on a daily basis like long term I don't know what that would look like traveling because I've been on planes Mm -hmm. um I've been on a lot of planes actually now that I'm thinking about it but the aisle, like, I can, you can barely walk down the aisle. Normally, well, I've so, seen these videos on TikTok. I don't know how, do you know how that works? I was never on a plane in my wheelchair. Normally, we would take, we would drive, and I would just take, <laughs> we would put my wheelchair in my dad's truck, mm-hmm. and then I would bring my crutches, because I had forearm crutches, mm-hmm. um, and, uh... I would use the forearm crutches, like, in, um, like, gas stations when we stopped, but Mm -hmm. I normally wouldn't go in, and then I would use the wheelchair for, like, restaurants and, um, stuff like that, Mm -hmm. but, excuse me, um, like, at the house that we Don't you have to, like, relearn the terrain of, is that the word? (laughs) Yeah. I feel like my brain fog is kind of bad because it's raining outside, mm-hmm. so I can't, like, make my sentences. They None of my sentences or words sound right. <laughs> no, I understand. Um, so, don't you have to, like, relearn the terrain? Like, carpets, steps. Mm-hmm. People don't, don't recognize that at all. Yeah. Like, okay, for example, when Walmart, like, rearranged their entire store, I had to relearn the store because I gauge... Like, whatever I need to get, if I need to get toothpaste, mm-hmm. I park, you know, where, what, the everyday yeah. care stuff yeah. is. Yeah, like on the right side. Yeah, so when they rearranged, I had to figure out where everything was again, yeah. because the less walking, the more energy I have, mm-hmm. the better I feel, the less sick I am. So, all of those little things people don't yeah. think about. Yeah. So, that's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> Like, come on. They're simple. They're just simple things. And people don't think about them. So, I also wish that, like, I could schedule, like, on these trips, like, recovery days. But when you're with a group of people, it's hard. Let's talk about that. Traveling with other people while you have a chronic illness. Slash disability. It's hard. Um, it's easier with family. Like, my vacations with my family are the best because they understand. Love that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they understand, like, because normally we'll go to the lake, which is really nice for mm-hmm. me because, like, water is really good for my body. Yeah. Or we'll go to the mountain because um, my dad's cousin has a house um, on you know and we'll go there and there's a lake near and so we will hike but I can't really hike but I'll do the best that I can you know Mm -hmm. and so they'll know like when I it's time for me to stop and so I can Mm -hmm. normally I have like those recovery times um and like I'll take a nap while my mom's making lunch or dinner Mm -hmm. um which is really nice but like traveling with like a one-day trip those are when, like, I've got to recover the next day. Yes, I need... Okay, well, I actually need to store energy the day before. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and th- which basically means I need to hibernate mm-hmm. um, and not do anything so that I store up energy, spend it during the day trip, and then recover the next day. Mm-hmm. A day trip, I can, like, dominate a day trip yeah because I will just like take the medicine push through have a great time and then I'll come home later and deal with all of the pain yeah. and I'll like pay for it later um when you're on like a week-long trip though you have to 
you pay for the fun that you have every day. And so there's no time to like let your body recover from the fun day you had so that mm-hmm. you can have energy for the next day. So it's just a long like energy draining process that's yeah. not super enjoyable. Personally for me it's not. Um I've gotten a lot better at um voicing when I need to rest. That's key. I need to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> Add that to the list. Um I just, yeah, vocalizing. I feel like if I just vocalize, that would fix a lot of mm-hmm. the issues. But then also the people I'm talking to need to, like, listen and then obey me. <laughs> obey you? <laughs> yes. You want me on this trip, so figure it out and help me be on the trip. Well, I'll just come you to know? all of your trips and <laughs> I'll just know. Also, what about, like, clothes? Like what? Oh. Clothes? Like for a day trip, what do you normally wear? A day trip, I'll like dress like my to my to what? <laughs> I will dress to feel my most confident, and I will wear makeup. I don't wear a lot of makeup anyway, though. So like me wearing makeup is like mascara, concealer. So like, me right now. <laughs> um, so. I'll do that. I'll, like, do my hair. Mm -hmm. And then on the way home, I will slowly unready myself. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll take my makeup off. I'll take my hair down, which my hair is short, so, like, take the clips out, whatever. Um, But, like, if I'm, like, a three-hour, like, to the doctor, leggings. Oh, yeah, the most comfortable outfit that I have. Praise the Lord for leggings. Honestly. (laughs) Um, Leggings, what else? Um, sweaters, mm-hmm. comfy t-shirts, I mean, but then also, okay, I deal with this, I don't know if you deal with this, but, like, when I go to a doctor appointment, I need to feel confident. I do, yes. While also, t- like, tailoring what I'm wearing to be my most comfortable. Yes, I am the same way. Because I'm like, what if this is gonna sound so bad, but you're gonna understand? Same. So don't know, laugh at me. I know people. what you're gonna What say. if there's a guy with chronic <laughs> illness, or he's disabled? What if my doctor is single and attractive? No. What if there's a guy that has chronic illness and he's oh. there and he loves God? So and if your if your doctor, mm-hmm. what if your doctor is all of those things? I don't want to marry a doctor. Why? Well. Is it because, like, we're sick Trauma. all the time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have to take I get care that. of sick people all anyways. I don't want to take care of me, you know? Yeah, I get that. I guess I'm just not super picky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm single. Same. In case anyone wants to know. <laughs> <laughs> we both are. That's uh, fine. So, anywho, yes. You want to feel confident. Confident? But then, because when I feel confident, I speak up for myself. Same. Why? I Why don't is know. it only when like, I feel confident? At my doctor's appointment, I like dressed up, but I was comfortable. Mm-hmm. And so I like felt like I could voice what I needed to mm-hmm. be changed and like I told her what was going on. But also, I had a CAT scan. And so. <laughs> Like, I couldn't have any metal on, and, like, I needed to be comfortable, and it was, like, 7 a.m. I will say this, um, side note, jewelry makes me feel normal. Me too! Really? Why are we the same? Well, we're really not. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But, yeah, I get it. Um, jewelry, like, okay, this goes into, like, some mental health stuff, but jewelry... Um, helps me like ground myself in the present and um, I'm not exactly sure why Um, we can talk about it on at another time Mm -hmm. but it grounds me it helps me feel present it um, I fidget with it 
if I like didn't have rings, I would probably like bite my nails. So I feel I like have rings and I bite my nails. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we can work on that too. That's Add why that I wear fake list. nails. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's all. I guess it's just all about confidence. I guess I don't know. But yeah. my point is, is like. Even a small thing like wearing one ring Mm -hmm. helps me feel more confident. And as strange as that sounds, like, makes a big difference Mm -hmm. in the entire, um, what, experience or, like, the time. mm, What am I trying to say? Makes it better? (laughs) Makes you feel more at peace. It makes the day go by better when you feel good about yourself. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. When you feel good about yourself, you the day goes better. Yeah, you're nicer. Better I'm a lot kinder when I like my outfit. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> I, I'm a lot nicer to people. <laughs> I just, I feel like I talk to more people and I feel more comfortable about myself. Yeah. I feel like maybe that, I think that's normal though. I think yeah. most people. Body like, dysmorphia is real. Ugh. I hate it. Yeah, I'll talk about that later. Yeah, too. there's another a one. Ugh, there are so many like side notes that are small tangents. But anyway, yes, confidence is key when traveling, mm-hmm. but also comfort is key. So yeah. you gotta, I guess you have to figure out what you feel comfortable in and what you still feel confident in. Yeah, I will say, um, if I wear, like, leggings, if I wear a really cute top, I feel better instead of a t-shirt. Mm-hmm. Like, small things like that. I don't wear leggings that often. Um, I have some, but I don't know. You like pants better? I like do linen like pants. pants. I like, yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> I do like linen. I don't like jeans. They make me... Jeans are the worst. Cancel jeans. <laughs> jeans are over. Jeans are overrated. We have evolved as humans. <laughs> After the year of 2020. Yes, please. I hate jeans. They make my stomach hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, the fabric of jean material actually affects my um, pain level. Same. So, Linen that's pants a thing. are comfortable. They're mm-hmm. stylish. What am I going to do during the winter? Wear linen pants. During the winter? Uh, yeah, wear leggings underneath them. Oh, innovation that excites. There you go. Tips with Haley and Thank Harry. you. I'll style you. I can't even style Please. myself. Oh, okay, well, maybe together we can figure it out. But um, um, What about like a week-long trip? What do you normally pack for clothes? I pack literally my whole closet because I never know, like, if my... This is sound, this is going to sound so weird. I never know what my nerves are going to feel like. So I never know if I'm going to feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Like Sensory overload. Yes. That's what that I was trying to say earlier. Thing. Sensory overload. That's when your body is really sensitive to the your environment, I guess. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, this is, like, kind of TMI. But, like, I just feel like I have to change like I just have to take let's just be blunt the bra is off yeah makeup's off we are in pajamas with blankets Mm -hmm. I have my weighted my weighted blanket I can't do a weighted blanket Um, it makes me feel anxious okay so it makes me feel like I'm being hugged not by a person it makes me feel (laughs) like I'm being pressed down into my mattress and I'm like I can't move oh okay well, don't do that. <laughs> That's then. why I have my Harry Styles blanket. Oh, love that. Um, what were we saying? Clothes, Clothes and traveling. Clothes and traveling. Okay. I, um, again, it's all about confidence for me. So, I will, like, hmm. Okay, so I have, like, lounging stuff that I'll take. Pajamas and then your clothes. So, like when you have downtime or you're at the hotel in between like activities or it's uh too early in the day to wear pajamas also like we'll just wear the pajamas anyway but my point is is that I have comfy things to wear when I'm not out doing things Mm -hmm. when I'm out doing things I need to feel my most confident regardless of comfort Mm -hmm. for this reason pictures social media (laughs) oh 
family um, pictures. <laughs> um, so I will say I sacrifice comfort for style during the day no, on don't. vacations and trips. I will look like a <laughs> trash bag during no. trips. Yes, I don't like pictures of myself. Um, I just I'll pack cute stuff, but I probably won't wear it. Mm-hmm. Like this weekend, I'll probably yeah pack because you know. I mean, it depends on like the activities. Exactly. Planned. Like if it's a one day trip, depends yeah. on what we're doing. So but you're I'm, not you're not gonna sacrifice comfort no. for style. Which I admire, and I wish I could be that way, but I care too much about what people like, or how people perceive me, I guess. I don't know. I really care about what other people say about me. No, I get which that. Which I need to work on again, but well, I, I feel, feel like, like... Oh, go okay. Ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. No, I have to ahead. say this. I feel like I have to make up for the fact that I'm sick. Oh, no, 100% get that. By coming across as not sick so that people will treat me like a normal person. No, I get that. But, like, for me, it's... I've come to terms with it, and I know Mm -hmm. that I'm sick, and I know that there's going to be times where I'm not going to be out, Mm -hmm. and I want to look cute when I am out, and so Mm -hmm. I try my best to look decent, but... If I don't, if I'm not comfortable in what I'm wearing, Mm -hmm. and, like, if my pants are too tight and it, like, kills me and, like, hurts my stomach, then I know that I'm going to flare. And so I've, like, Mm -hmm. learned with that, like, I have to wear clothes that are too big for me and, like, make it work. Yes, we love oversized clothes. Yes, I have to wear oversized clothes Mm -hmm. or I'm going to flare. Yes. Skinny jeans, cancel. Cancel skinny jeans. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. They're not comfortable. Why did we ever do that? I used to wear them religiously in Same. high school. Why? I don't know. Those were like Ugg boots. <laughs> 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 There's pictures somewhere, oh, probably. No. Yeah. Ugg boots. I just. Do you remember Tom's? Oh, yeah. I still have a pair. I don't really? wear them, but That's I have them in my closet. Okay. Anyway, side tangent. But I just. <laughs> like, I feel like there's ways that I can make the clothes that I have decent. Oh, with for being sure. comfortable. Yeah. You look great today, oh, by the thank way. Thank you. She's wearing a t-shirt. <laughs> From my college. Which is so cute. Thank and you. Got it on Amazon. She's wearing... <laughs> we love Amazon. I'm sorry for those people who... Okay, can we talk about this real quick? Can we talk about my freaking nose ring that I got on Amazon? Okay. <laughs> yes. That's tangent. I'll tell y'all at the end. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, What was I going to say? Oh, yeah, for those people who are, like, down J- Jeff Bezos or whatever, listen, people with disabilities and chronic illness, Amazon is a lifesaver, and people don't understand that, and I am thankful for, I mean, I, COVID was horrible, it still is horrible, mm-hmm. but... It's bad right now. It is, but, um, like, what is it, not self-checkout, which I do appreciate, but, um, like, when you order stuff and oh, then you yeah, the, pick um, up, yeah. um, that is, like, a life changer yes. for my, my health because then I don't have to sacrifice that energy that I could be using working, school, doing things that I care about. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so, yeah. Even and. just, like, traveling at home, like... When I have days where, like, I'll have, like, a set day. Normally, it's Mondays for me where, mm-hmm. like, I'll have to take my check to the bank and um, run to Target and get things for school and, like... You have, like, do you have one day where you get stuff mm-hmm. done? And then the rest of the day... And then on Mondays, I also work, and so... Um, a lot happening. mm mm-hmm. And so that night, I'm normally super fatigued. Mm-hmm. But shopping, like even traveling throughout our town, is just like I have to make sure I'm wearing something comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're on vacation or whatever, and your people want to go shopping, are you a fan of that? Um, I I I hate it because. <laughs> I don't want to waste my energy 
on shopping. I want to do it. I want to use it like experiencing something. It depends on what we're doing. Like normally, I want to go to a bookstore. Mm. Um, <laughs> we want to go to calming places. Yeah. Because museums. I don't like museums. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, never mind. <laughs> I mean, that's okay. okay. It's valid. It's it, you're valid. I just. I They're would rather not for go everyone. to like a bookstore. They're and... mostly for old people. <laughs> I recognize that. <laughs> or like a coffee shop and yeah. read a book. Vacations for me are just like taking time to rest. Especially mm-hmm. for my family, because we literally I guess never that's stop. Like the difference in our families, because when we go somewhere, we're like we have to experience everything, which can not be good. But like, I I am that way. I do want to experience everything. So I'm a workaholic. So if I'm on vacation, like it needs to be productive, which is again need to work on that too. <laughs> but um, yeah, our vacations are like. We'll go to the lake, and we'll hike, and... I need a vacation with your family, yeah, you is do. what I'm hearing. It's nice. What I'm, like, sensing we'll nap. this conversation. <laughs> and there's a lot of napping involved. <laughs> Love that. Love that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else related to your travel. Um, does it bother you, like, going out to eat? Because everybody's, like, they want to experience food. We when you travel. Don't. Okay, like on vacations, we normally don't eat out. My mom is the best cook, and so we normally That's just cool. like money saver. Go, go to back. Walmart and like <laughs> she'll make food for the whole week. That's amazing. But I do like when we go to Memphis. Mm-hmm. I want to eat out. Like I want to go yeah. to Bobaloo's or like Central mm-hmm. or like Nashville. I want to eat out because so it's my Nashville. point in this question is that. Food can make me flare. Oh, yeah, same. I have to and make so sure if it's gluten-free or dairy-free. When you eat out? Or sugar-free, yeah. But you don't <laughs> do that I know. in your daily life. I'm working on it. So I haven't had gluten this, this whole week. Really? Yeah, I've been good. Good for you. I had cake I'm and proud of you. bread. No. <laughs> and I paid for it at 4 in the morning. Oh. <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, so when you eat out, you, like, try and eat clean. Been, yeah. I just, I can I think tell I think I'm the opposite. So, like, during the day, I'm, like, snacking on fruit and cucumbers and maybe some pretzels. And then, like, dinner, I eat whatever I want. I, this week, I haven't been eating a lot. I don't know what's wrong with me. So, my point, though... Is that, like, all of that goes out the window when I travel. (laughs) Oh, yeah, same. When I travel, I normally don't stick to, like, my dietary restrictions. But then it just, like, ruins it. I don't understand. Like, I'm I'm hearing the words coming out of my mouth, and I'm Mm -hmm. like, that's not what you do, though. (laughs) Like, I, Uh, I, I'm the same. It's like you have to sacrifice something. Yeah. And I don't want to sacrifice the convenience of eating out while traveling. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? I would rather sacrifice like eating gluten and dairy than like something just popped in my jaw. Then like sacrifice I don't know. I comfort so growing up we went off of dairy gluten and eggs and it was so traumatizing I refused to change my diet Mm -hmm. now because of how traumatizing it was and I will like do other things to make up for that Mm -hmm. in my life like resting throughout the day yeah and does that make sense yeah it does I just I just can't do it all I can't follow all the rules I can't, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because if you just, like, live your life, like, what well, am I trying to say? you're already taking medication, and mm-hmm. you're already doing all of these things. Like, you have to give yourself 
grace. Yeah, some slack. I mean, yeah. goodness. Sometimes you just need some cake. And last <laughs> night, I needed cake. Yes. And so I ate it, dealt with the consequences. Mm-hmm. Now I've moved on. Yeah. But that's and now I'm bothering. thinking about ramen. <laughs> oh, <but laughs> that sounds good. Well, can you think of anything else for this topic? I was, but then I forgot it because that bug flew by your face. Oh. Is it on me? No, it flew that way. Okay. Oh, my gosh. You have to tell me. <laughs> I just said that so casually. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Okay. So, maybe if it comes back, you can blurt it out. <laughs> okay. And in the meantime, Haley, what's your number? Uh, it's like a six. We forgot that this week. Oh, that's pretty... I know. We've, like, just... <laughs> the podcast is what it is now. <laughs> um, so you're a six? Yeah, that's my pretty face kind of hurts for good reason, but it's mm-hmm. fine. And I kind of have, like, hip that? pain. But... You want to talk about why your face hurts? Yeah, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing. It's not funny. <laughs> so I bought... I have my nose pierced. And it's so cute. Mm, it, like, thanks. suits you. Your style is now complete. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> um, but I got it pierced in, like, May. Yeah, May. Mm-hmm. And um, this the piercer told me that I could change it um, after a couple of months. And I have a question. Yes. Because we're in chronic pain, how bad did getting your nose hurt? It didn't hurt. Okay. <laughs> like, it, it hurt when it went in. Mine was, like, a pinch. I also have my yeah. nose pierced. It was just a pinch. Um, pain, like, I can de- I can handle it. So. Yeah. Anyway, it was, like, ahead. less than an IV. Yeah, and even the IV The IVs doesn't... don't hurt me. I have, I've had worse pain, yeah. so... It, this hurts now. This hurts worse. Okay, than... finish your story. Okay. <laughs> so, um... I, on, what's today? Thursday. Today's Thursday. Yes. Um, On Tuesday, I got this uh, nose ring, like a hoop, Mm -hmm. and I wanted to put it in. Where did you get this nose ring from, Haley? I got it from Amazon, but (laughs) I, like, researched it, and it had five stars, and it was uh, surgical steel, and it was, like, the same... It was 20 gauge, and that's the needle mm-hmm. that they pierced me with, and it was so five. So it should have been fine. Yeah, and it was five millimeters, and, like, so I thought it would be, like, a good size. Mm-hmm. Well, I put it in Friday, and it was comfortable. It was a little bit snug, but I ordered another one because I was like, I'll wear this one until the other one comes in. Well, I woke up this morning, and my nose was gigantic. I have a picture of it. I'll show you later. Um, from when I woke up this morning. Just swollen? It was huge. Oh, no. And my nose ring was, like, indented into my nose. Mm. And so, for, like, an hour, I tried to pull out, like, pull it apart, and I couldn't do it. And I was freaking out, and I was, like, in a panic. And then I was like, oh, Caitlin's here. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's my older sister, and she's a queen, and I love her dearly. Aww. And so, I got two pairs of tweezers and I ran back to her room and I was like, Caitlin, I need you now. I need you to get this out of my nose. So and it so, didn't require wire cutters because that was no. my first thought, which I don't know why my brain went there and not to tweezers. So I'm glad you didn't. <laughs> didn't. I was like, I'm going to have to go to the fire department and like they're going to have to <laughs> cut this oh, no. out of my nose. And so um She got one pair of tweezers and put it at the top of, like, where the piercing, the hole is, Mm -hmm. and then at the bottom, and she pulled it apart, and it popped, and I, like, pulled... It popped? Yeah. Like, like, your nose popped? No, 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 the piercing did. I was like... (gasps) And she pulled it apart, and I, like, pulled it out, and trigger warning, blood. Yeah. And it was, like, bleeding, Mm. and and it was, like, they're right here. I don't know if it's still there, but it, like, burnt my nose, and, like, it's super red. So I put the other piercing. It's traumatizing. <laughs> I like literally cried this morning and I sent oh, Caitlin no. money for. Well, I was just afraid it wasn't gonna come out. Yeah. So I sent. There's Caitlin, like a moment of like yeah. intense fear that you're gonna have to have surgery to yeah, remove. I really was. <laughs> oh no. And so I sent Caitlin money for coffee because I was. Oh. So- <laughs> <laughs> I was like, please get you whatever you want today oh. because you deserve it. But I put the, the stud back in, and I'm not going to change it for, like, a month. Yeah. I'm not going to touch just, it. Yeah. Well, I just keep touching it, it, but... heal. It's, like, it feels like it's burnt. 
like mm. from the metal, but it might might have been just too tight. I don't know. So my body doesn't work. <laughs> So, um, I have my ears pierced, mm-hmm. and I have to wear titanium jewelry mm-hmm. um, in my ears and in my nose. And if I don't, like, the first time I had, like, my cartilage pierced, like, the top of my ear, and it swelled twice its size, it was, like, heat was coming off of it, and I ran a low-grade fever. So... Um, know your body yeah. <laughs> and um, this is the one that they put in at the beginning like when I got it pierced that's what I have back in now that you don't and have any issues with no it's surgical steel and that's what they told me I mean it just kind of makes sense that these small little things don't work out for us because <laughs> our bodies just aren't. maybe I just shouldn't buy them on Amazon right. but like I, I didn't mean, it. we don't have a Claire's because it got hit by a tornado. I miss our Claire's. I do That's too. like Claire's is my childhood. Claire's and our <laughs> Barnes and Noble. Yeah, are gone. I um, also have another traumatic story that happened to me this week. If you you've like. had a very eventful week. So, Monday night, my parents were in Texas. They were headed home from Texas. Yes. Caitlin was with her boyfriend Bryce. Bryce, I love you. <laughs> and then Reagan, my little sister, was asleep or okay. was like going to sleep. And I had just gone to Sonic, and I don't judge me. I wanted ice cream, so I got this ice cream with, like... Treat yourself. <laughs> I wanted ice cream with, like, Butterfinger in it. <gasps> yes. And so I got it. And I went home, and I had finished it. And I started getting hives all over my stomach and my chest. And I couldn't stop coughing. Side note, my older sister's allergic to nuts, <laughs> which I've never had a problem before. I eat, I mean, I've eaten them all the time. And so I had hives everywhere, and my throat was really, like, closing Were you up. alone, like, in your car? No, I was at home, oh, okay. and Reagan was asleep. And um, I couldn't stop coughing. My chest was really heavy, and so I called my mom. I was like, I don't know what to do. Nobody's... Like I no, think I'm dying. Yeah, and she's like, I'm not sure. Let me see the whelps. And so I like showed her, and she was like, "Take some Benadryl." So I took two Benadryl, and she was like, "I think you're having an allergic reaction." And so like, it didn't get to the point where I like couldn't breathe. Like I could still breathe. It was fine. And I like talked to Grace, and she was like, "Do I need to leave the fair right now?" Because <laughs> she was about to come over, and Caitlin was like, "I can come home." And I was like, "I really think I'm okay." So I just went to sleep. Alarming. Yeah. So but I'm just like, not gonna eat peanuts anymore. I think that's probably a yeah. good idea. And then every time I eat pistachios, my face falls asleep. So I don't eat those anymore. <laughs> my face is just like I don't even know what to say. I'm glad you're alive. I am too. <laughs> um. So all of this happened and your pain level is at a six. I'd say that that's pretty good yeah. considering what has happened to you <laughs> this in week. the last week. And then Wednesday. <laughs> oh my gosh, Haley. I, I had a doctor's appointment at seven and I woke up at 6.56. I made it by seven. I went in my pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> There is no way I'm missing a doctor. Oh, no. Because you don't know when you're going to get in next. Side note, Haley has to wait until 2022. For a doctor's appointment. For neurology. So, yeah, you best believe I am not going to miss a doctor appointment. Mm -hmm. And, sorry, Dad, I will speed to get there. Oh, it, I mean, I live down no the street cop, from No cop, no stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. I don't know how I made it there in four minutes. But I did. That's wild. I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm glad you're alive. <laughs> <laughs> Today's Thursday, and I feel like something is going to happen. No, no. <laughs> I'm praying it doesn't. Nothing will happen. Oh, wait, my nose. Oh, that your nose happened. happened. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, good Lord, Haley. Just... I don't even know what to tell you. I don't either. Keep, I don't, stay in touch. <laughs> <laughs> I'll 
I'll text you tomorrow. Are you still alive? <laughs> We're driving to Nashville. <laughs> Maybe I should let Grace drive the whole way. After the week you've had, yeah, I'd recommend it. <laughs> Please. <laughs> For my peace of mind, yeah. Um, okay. I guess I'll say my number. Although, like, following your week, <laughs> there's just, like... <laughs> um, so, I'm at a... Almost said seven, but I'm really at an eight. I'm sorry. And it's because it's storming outside. So the weather is terrible. It's killing me. Is it? A, well, you have you're too busy with trying to stay alive to think about the weather. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I have like a lot of appointments, a doctor appointment I need to cancel, a doctor appointment that I need to get to today, and that's later today. And um, so I just like I guess the anticipation of those things mm. and then the weather. Um so I have no stories. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, um, I'm I'm so, I'm kinda glad you don't have you don't have a week like mine. <laughs> it's me been too. a lot. That sounds like a lot. I'm just I'm hoping Harry is so good, you know? <laughs> It will be. It will be everything. Everything and more. And more. Oh, my mouth made a weird noise. We love Harry Styles. Y'all pray that I don't have another day tomorrow. Not that. (laughs) Pray that I don't have another weird day tomorrow. Just um, drive the speed limit. (laughs) I will. Bring medication (laughs) in case you have another reaction. Um... Don't buy jewelry off Amazon. <laughs> what else have we learned this week? Um, I think that's it. I think yeah. those are the yeah. top, what was that, three? Three. Top three? Yeah. So, go about your lives, everyone, and prosper <laughs> with the new info that you've received. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. I'm done. I'm done, too. Okay. Okay, bye. Bye. Have a good week.